Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match. It's time to be Google Frog and Aquanim on Isis Delta, which is a map that really doesn't get a lot of play, which kind of makes sense because it is sort of an asymmetric map. It's not the most popular, very hilly, kind of favors spiders. Actually, get a really nice trick if you put you can put recluses here and they can kill anything in this area. Nice harassment spot, and it's very safe too because on the side of a cliff, it's hard to get at. However, not sure what Google Frog I'm going to be going for in this map. It is going to be interesting. Google Frog should know if anyone's been watching this show for a while or is in any way involved with Zero K will know Google Frog's name. <clears throat> Excuse me. Aquanim, not quite so familiar. Aquanim has actually been largely Google Frog's teammate in the 2v2 tournaments. The last couple 2v2 tournaments, Google Frog and Aquanim have been working together. So it's interesting to see them fight each other, and we'll have that going right now. So Google Frog starting out with Amphib Factory. Kind of makes sense. Gonna try and get through the center pretty quickly. I mean, there are land bridges. Should point out that this map does have land bridges along the south side here and the north side here, but the center area is pretty much impossible to get to without amphibs. On the other hand, Aquanim just skipping land entirely. Going for a blastering to scout and then some gnats, possibly calm nat, maybe. Yeah, going for very quick gunships and getting they're opening economy, getting not quite 10 10. They need to build another solar collector here to get the 10 10. They're going to be 10 8, which isn't an ideal position to be in. Blastman coming around the side will be able to find Google Frog's starting position and see what's going on. Possibly kill a metal extractor. I don't think. So. No, it won't kill a metal extractor. Won't even be close. Does see what's going on, though, and I think that. That wasn't on hold fire. No, that was not on hold fire. Or probably wasn't on hold fire, which was a bit of a mistake. That Blastman should have just gone around until it... Well, I guess I did see everything kind of needed to see. But the radar would have been the only target I think that would have been able to kill. And that would have been a good target too. However, uh, Aquanim getting some Banshees up, getting Banshees and Gnats. Probably still going for calm kill. However, Google Frog, they are prepped. They have Razor. They have Razor and will live just fine. Google Frog has... This is the thing, you can't easily attack with gunship or air start without dealing a lot of damage, because now this is up. The Nash might be able to stun it, but Aquanim has to pull back until they get, you know, three or four Brawlers. Or maybe Blackdons, but definitely Brawlers. And it's just... Well, actually, you know, Black Blackdons would kill the Razor more directly. You're going around the back for some extra harassment is kind of nice, but this Razor has a utterly massive range. Which I'd like to demonstrate, but I apparently cannot. Okay, whatever. Anyway, let's do it this way. So yeah, the Razor has this red circle. That's the Razor's range. So bear that in mind. Pretty much everything right now that Google Frog has is inside of that range. Now, if Aquanim attacks without strafing, it turns off strafing here. And they might be able to get the periphery. They'll be able to get this wind generator, or three wind generators, this metal extractor. That's about it. And there's actually a Razor being pushed up in the back, so Google Frog's even protecting that. There really isn't anything that Aquanim can touch at this point. So Aquanim letting Google Frog basically get away with everything while Aquanim trying to essentially build up as well, trying to outpace. But wind on this map, not particularly good. As you see on the, the tooltip, the wind range is 0 0.6 to 2.5. So the wind generators are not necessarily as valuable as solar collectors at this point. For cost. Now, for anyone who's unfamiliar, in case you're wondering, wind generators here are half the cost of solar collectors, but they have variable power. The power range is listed as wind range, and there's a minimum, and the maximum is always 2.5 and 0k. So, wind range minimum of 0.6 means that, because they're half the cost, they might go down to being less than half as useful. Solar Collector has two energy guaranteed, so if a wind generator has, like, one energy, it's at least as valuable for cost as a Solar Collector. If it has more, it's much more valuable. If it has less, it's not as valuable. But I believe conventional wisdom is about 0.4 to 0.6 is a good minimum. 0.9, definitely. 0.9, you use wind instead of solar once it's 0.9 or higher. Because it's just cheaper. The wind generator will always be more valuable than a solar collector in that case. In this case, it's just usually more valuable than a solar collector. However, Aquanim, back to unit composition. I really don't understand what this unit composition is about, especially with the arches in place. Honestly, I would have just gone for a fax switch at this point. Either that or gone for Mass Brawler. Like one of the two. Brawler just locked this stuff down and 
try to get periphery kills, maybe hit the commander when they're on the periphery, although at this point, Google Frog's commander... Actually, Google Frog's commander is on the periphery and could be directly hit. So that would make sense. Nat's going to try to get rid of the ducks and try to get the archers, but... Sorry, anglers. But that's not going to do any good. Everything going down, that Banshee just barely survives. Really, there's not much to be said here other than... Do a land switch or go for Brawler. Go Brawler or go home. I, oh, okay. And as I say that, Aquanim goes for Brawler. We have seen the... Well, okay. Went for Brawler and then went for Blastwing. I'm really not sure why Aquanim is going for Blastwing. I, they might be thinking that they operate like ticks. Maybe Blastwings operate like ticks, but... Blastwings are nowhere near as useful for splash damage and crowd control as ticks are. Especially when archers are what you're fighting against. I mean, Blastwings aren't cloaked, they don't have particularly high splash damage, they're more shrapnel based, like they have a kind of forward cone splash to them. Although it's actually quite literally, whatever the shrapnel hits takes extra damage. But they aren't particularly good crowd control. Not the way that ticks and roaches are. And they're about the same co actually no, they're about half the cost, maybe a third of the cost, but yeah, three of them can sort of work. And yes, they can dig into the ground, but then you don't get the shrapnel effect, so... It's... it's tricky to use them well. They really are not roaches. I mean, in large enough numbers, they can sort of act like them, but it's not the same. So yeah, I really don't understand the Blastwing approach. The Brawler coming up afterwards... I mean, the Blastwings here sort of makes sense that there's an assumption of attack along this side, and now Google Frog terraforming a ramp up, which means that... I actually guess that's kind of likely. But even with that... Google Frog is probably not going to step on these Blastwings. Now, at the same time, Aquanim is expanding along to the south side of the map. They are taking more territory, and Google Frog not really expanding along here as well. They're getting a conch here, which is out of range of the Razor. Let's point that out. This Razor cannot hit it. Oh, yeah, it's the green circle here. This Razor cannot hit it. Neither Razor can. At this point, the... Well, I don't think Aquanim's going to go for it. This isn't a good thing to go for. Aquanim doesn't know necessarily that there are no further razors. They do know what the razor range is, though, and they actually are trusting their gut and going to go for it, which will be successful. At the same time, though, Google Frog going for a counterattack, which will possibly win the game. Aquanim's commander about to go down. Very quickly takes a lot of damage. However, Gla sorry, Blastwing's coming in, which don't do much. Like I said, they really, really don't do much. Almost would have been better to have them stay here and just operate as landmines, because... The way they worked there did not work out, and Aquanim doesn't even care anymore. That's it, that's game. Doesn't even build the brawler up. Just... Wow, right as it finished, too. Yeah, that was game. Bit anticlimactic, but it does show... Kind of thing with gunships. You gotta be careful with gunships. I mean... I was actually playing with Sanic the other day. And I beat him with gunships. With a brawler rush. And it was actually, I think, I only won because... Sanic also kind of went for brawler rush, but they went a bit later. So mine came out first. And was able to lock them down because they didn't have any AA in the process. But yeah, Brawler rushing is a tricky thing to do, and a map like Isis Delta, not recommended. I was on Ravage when I was playing. That's a map where it can work, but not Isis Delta. So anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed those casts. And hope you're as happy as I am about the fact that there is now an in-game win counter that will make tournaments a lot easier to show wins for. But anyway, apart from that... I'll be it for me tonight. So... Actually, not quite it for me tonight. I also want to mention another thing about the wind counter is that... The nice thing about the wind counter, an idea I think will be cool, more of a thing that comes from fighting games, is when you have a wind counter, you can say to someone, hey, let's go first to 10 or first to 100 or something, which I wouldn't recommend in 0k. I mean, first to 100 is impossible. First, it take a couple weeks. First to 10 would be a few hours. I mean, bear in mind, we're talking about a game genre with fighting games where it's like, you know, a minute or two per match. So first to 100 takes two hours. And it gets kind of boring once you get past 50 games or so. From personal, ex well, from personal experience watching it. Wild and crazy Evo. Anyway, besides that, yeah, so you can do that and you'll have right on here the win counter. It'll say how many wins. There's also little stars here that show for deluxe player list only. The crude player list doesn't have these. The crude player list instead just shows the number. That's all it does. The right, crude player list, you see the number of wins. But deluxe player list, you see that... Well, if it would resize properly. All oh, right, sorry, but there's a bit of a bug with the player list. They don't load up dead players necessarily. But yeah, if you see that, there will be 
stars along the player name who won last. That's just a l nice little kind of convenience feature so that you know, hey, I won the last game, and then it's kind of nice to know. It's not necessarily supposed to, it doesn't have to be there, but it's a thing that might as well. It's nice to have. So anyway, that's it for me tonight. Now that I've said my piece about the win counter, and now you should all go and use it to play a series with your friends and play more games of Zero K because, well, do you really need a reason? But if you do, challenge it first to whatever challenges. That's, that can now be an easily done thing. Well, next stable or whenever Google Frog merges the pull request. Anyway. Yeah. So, like I said, they show up when you get wins by default. You can have them show up all the time, but by default they will show up when a player has more than zero wins. A player actually has wins. So that's it. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.